What is going on guys, Jack here and welcome back to another episode of the Portsmouth Career Mode series. This is episode number 41 and I'm going to start today's episode off by going back into the transfer window. If you did miss the last episode guys, we did start season 3 and I do recommend you go back and watch it. We made a couple of signings and we also did a few adjustments to the squad. We are also in talks to sell a player which goes by the name of Keiko. He is going to Sunderland most likely in a deal that's worth about three and a half million pounds. So that is a good deal. It will mean that we'll get some more transfer funds which are desperately needed if we are going to be signing any more players. So to start today's episode off, we've got a little bit of a problem and I've just looked at the wage budget and the finances. There is something seriously wrong with, well, my finances. I have no idea what's going on. It went from being zero or minus wage budget to two billion one hundred forty-seven million four hundred seventy-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-eight. What is going on? When I change it, this happens. So I really don't know what's going on, and I am a bit worried because I don't know if it's going to be affecting this series. It probably will affect the transfers that we do make this season unless I can figure out a way to sort this out. If you guys have any suggestions in the comments down below, then of course do let me know as it'll be interesting to see if there is a way to fix this. But for now, I'm just going to have to deal with it and basically see what happens. So a lot of you guys in the previous episode did suggest that I should go and look for some free agent players just so that I can basically fill up the remaining places in my squad, basically. I've got a pretty full squad already, but I am looking at a couple of free agents. We've got this guy, Matteo Crescito here, who looks pretty decent, I guess, for a 19-year-old youth player. I may offer him a contract, actually, but here's the problem. I've got unlimited wage budget. I have no idea what's going on. Look at that. I can offer him 1 million, and I, I seriously don't know what's going on. But um, it will probably affect the transfers that we do make in this season. That doesn't mean I'm going to go out and offer Messi a pre-contract signing. Don't worry. I'm not going to go insanely unrealistic like that. I'm going to try and keep it as realistic as possible. Even when we do sell Keiko, I need to keep it realistic. Uh, despite the fact that we've got two billion on the wage budget now. So I've got to keep it realistic. And I think this guy would be perfect for our squad. Just as a bit of a backup player. So another free agent that I was actually looking at last season was George Taylor here, the central midfielder who is from England, 19 years old. He's got some really nice physical stats. I was looking at him last season. He looks like a decent enough player to play for Portsmouth and a good youth player at that that can play in the cup matches. So I will go ahead and offer him a contract and we'll wait and see what he comes back and says about that. So I've just had a little look online at the solutions to this infinite budget allocation that I've just had and apparently all I need to do is get some extra funds from the board or not extra funds from the board, I need to advance in a cup competition basically if that makes sense. So if I advance in a cup competition or I gain some money, let's say I win a Capsule 1 Cup match, then apparently it will actually sort itself out. So hopefully, I've just got to hope that that happens. But we have had a player sold. Keiko has gone to Sunderland for 3.5 million. That gives us 3 million to spend on some new players. So I can now offer Rolando Aaron's a contract. We've also had all of these accepted, but I will offer Rolando Aaron's a contract here. And I will give him a five-year deal. I will also give him important first-team player. Or no, I'll, I won't give him a squad role. I'll just keep it as it is. And hopefully, Rolando Aarons does go ahead and sign Lewis Baker here. I'm going to go ahead and sign him. Or I want to sign him anyway. But um, what's going on there? So now I've gone from having minus... Wait, I've gone from having two billion in the wage budget to minus two billion. How does that even work? He's only on 10 grand a week. Oh my god. I need to go and sort this out and then I'll be back in a minute once I've sorted it out. Okay, so the weird thing is I can actually accept... I can accept uh, Rolando Aaron's now, but for some reason I can't accept... Um, what's his name? I can't accept Lewis Baker. So I'll just go ahead and sign Rolando Aaron's and we'll have to wait and see in the coming days if we can actually sign him. I don't know. I'll try and sign him now. So there you go. Now I can sign him. This is such... A glitch. I don't understand what's going on. I'm really confused at the moment. But let's go ahead and sign Lewis Baker. That is an absolute bargain. £400,000 plus Finzo Ojo. 
I know it's a bit sad that he's leaving, but he's just not growing, and I can't afford to have players that don't grow in this squad. And I think Lewis Baker would be a better addition. He is English, he is young, and he's got a little bit more potential as well. He's going to be our backup to Jordan Ibe on the left midfield position, and we managed to pick him up for an absolute bargain. 600,000 plus Bogdan, that is brilliant. And I'm surprised Newcastle let him go. He was an absolute gem in the first season when I picked him up on loan. And hopefully he will be just as good this season in the championship. And we also have Lewis Baker as well. I overpaid slightly uh, for this guy. But he does look like a good player. He's 69 overall at the age of 21. He looks like a bit of a playmaker actually. Got good free kick accuracy. Good finishing. And overall he does look like a good player I have to admit. He's probably going to be a bit of a playmaker in this side. Five star weak foot. So really, he is a replica almost of Funzo Ojo. Although Funzo Ojo is a little bit more well-rounded. But he's got the five star weak foot like Funzo Ojo. And really the only difference I see is that he's English. And of course, Funzo Ojo is Belgian. Right, so we have our first game here of the season. But because I want to get through this transfer window relatively quickly, probably in about three episodes... I'm going to have to simulate this match so that this episode doesn't go on for too long. It's not really an important match anyway because it is the first round of the Capital One Cup against a League Two side, which we should go ahead and win despite it being an away match. We should go ahead and win it very nicely. I'm very, very happy with this squad at the moment. I think we've got some good players in there. Mansfield are playing five at the back. Are you kidding me? I think it's the same for every League Two side that we did come up against when we were in the League Two. Uh, but um, we'll simulate this and see what happens. Ibe gets a goal in the 32nd minute, which is good. We go 1-0 up here. Hopefully, we can, well, hang on to our lead and maybe get a second. And it's Christie to get the second there. His first goal in a Portsmouth shirt. That's good to see him getting his first goal in a Portsmouth shirt. And we end up winning the game 2-0 here. So here we go into our first match of the season, guys, in the championship. I am so excited. I can't wait to get it underway. Let's get into this match. Bournemouth are going to be a tough side to beat here for sure. They are a side that are actually first in the championship this season in real life. So they clearly are a good side. And I've got my work cut out here if I'm going to be picking up any kind of a result. Ewan O'Kane crossing it into the middle. And what a save. What a save that is by our keeper, Tom Heaton. A brilliant stop. Well, there we go. Half-time of our first championship game. It's a nil-nil draw so far. And we haven't really created enough chances to go on and make it 1-0 in this match. And get our first goal in the championship. But I'm hoping in the second half, we did have some good chances in the first half. Although they weren't good enough, like I did say. But I'm hoping... We'll be creating some more better chances in the second half. And hopefully we can push on and win our first game here. Bournemouth have a corner here. And it's a good chance for them to possibly create a good chance here. As we completely fumble it. What the hell is that about? Oh my god. Tom Heaton, what on earth are you doing there? You've completely left it open for Callum Wilson to get a goal there. And of course he's not going to miss from there. That is ridiculous. Why on earth he even tried to punch that? He completely missed it. And now we're 1-0 down. That is just absolutely brilliant. We've got a big mountain to climb now. We've got to create something very soon. Here we go. Munir down this right-hand side. He's been taken out and it's a penalty. Yes, it's a penalty in the 90th minute. That is exactly what I needed in this game. A little bit of a confidence booster. And it's Munir, our new right-back, that wins the penalty there. Really well done, and it looks like we are going to level up the game if I can convert this penalty here. It looks like Gardner's going to be taking it, though. Can he score it, though? Please tell me he's going to score it. Yes, he does. Gardner's the hero in this match. He gets us a goal in the 90th minute. An equaliser and a pre-contract signing wins the penalty and also scores the penalty and it looks like we're going to get something out of this match after all there we go we managed to get a point out of this game we should have got more from this game than we actually did but i'm not going to complain because we didn't take our chances but Mooney did win a penalty late on after a really bad challenge on him and then gardener our pre-contract signing scored the penalty in the 90th minute and it's a 1-1 draw here not too bad of a result to start off as Bournemouth are a very, very strong side in the championship. And overall, I'm very happy with that result.
So we have a transfer offer here for our scout future star, Remy Bacar. We will have a little look at it. So Crystal Palace want to take him on a season-long loan. Boy, is he unhappy. He is seriously unhappy. But I've got to send him out on loan so that he can get some experience and hopefully grow. And then maybe at the end of the, well, at the end of the loan spell, maybe he will actually have a potential status. Because at the moment, he doesn't even have one. So that will probably happen at the end of the loan spell. We will send him out to Crystal Palace. And hopefully he does well there. So we have a game here against Birmingham guys in the championship. I will go ahead and play this so that we have two games in today's episode. I have changed the formation up to a 4-4-2 formation. If it doesn't work, I'll just switch it back to the 4-3-3 formation. But let's hope that the changes in this match will hopefully spur us on for our first win here in the championship well that turned out to be a bad cross but it's actually fallen here to the player and he's crossed it into the middle and luckily well he's punched it away there and we can go on the counter attack here with Neil Pay using his pace he is really good but he doesn't have the best of stamina so he's gonna get caught up he's turned the defender he's have a shot but he's saved by the keeper that was a bit of a tame shot really and I probably should have done a bit more with that chance well, there we go, half-time, and we are not doing well in this match. Again, we are not doing well with this formation. So I think at half-time, I am actually going to change things. 4-2-4 formation. Let's go attacking, and let's get this win. Good interception, and let's go. Okay, so he gets tackled, so he just he's just like, yeah, I won't run. I won't run, but that is a decent run. He takes it around the goalkeeper. Have a shot. Berahino, there we go. We finally got a goal. And literally three minutes after I made those changes at halftime, we are 1-0 up here. A brilliant goal by Berahino. The goalkeeper made a fatal error by coming off of his line. And that allowed Berahino to take it round him and make it 1-0 here. There we go. Passing it all the way to Forrest. All he has to do is put it in. And that was simple. That really was. I think I found my formation. I really have. 4-2-4. Four, seems to work a treat with the players that I have two goals within the space of what is it five minutes that is ridiculous so clearly this formation does work a lot better than the 4-4-2 that I was having earlier on in the match and again it's the goalkeeper making a mistake really coming out there why on earth he came out I have no idea because it allowed Forrest once again to take it round and this time slide it into the back of the net so there we go. We win our first championship game. We've got one win and one draw from two matches. And I have to say, we did play very, very well in that match. And the goalkeeper really did contribute. The Birmingham goalkeeper, that is, did contribute to the team's failure. Because he made some vital errors coming off of his line. But Berahino and Forrest do get goals in a 2-0 result. And a very good result indeed. And one that I do believe we did deserve to win in. This is going to be the end of the episode, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed. And if you have enjoyed this episode of the Portsmouth Career Mode series, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already as it really does help out my channel guys and it shows me that you guys are enjoying this series and want it to carry on but other than that guys i'm gonna have to leave it there and i'll see you next time for another video thanks for watching